Welcome back. Well, fentanyl is now the top cause of death among adults in the U.S. The CDC reports the drug is behind more deaths than COVID-19, suicide, and car accidents. It is responsible for at least 70% of all drug deaths, taking nearly 42,000 lives in 2021. But now researchers are developing a so-called fentanyl vaccine. Essentially, it would block the opioid from entering the brain and eliminating the high that comes along with it. Susan Pittman with Drug Free Duval is joining us this morning live via Zoom. Thank you so much for being here to talk about this very important issue. Well, thank you to Channel 4 and to, to you, Ashley, for being willing to talk about it. Absolutely. Let's get right to it. Can you walk us through some of the trends and obstacles that you all are seeing right now here locally? Yes, absolutely. The first is the real rise in the 14 to 18 year old age cohort in terms of drug overdose death. And it went up 94% in 2020 and another 20% in 2021. So um, that has predominantly been with um, kids not seeking fentanyl. They are seeking um, like a, a offline um, counterfeit Xanax or a, a Percocet or something like that, and it's laced with fentanyl. So kids don't even know they're using fentanyl. Another trend that we see, fentanyl is being added to so many street drugs like cocaine, um, methamphetamine. So the bottom line is people are overdosing and dying from fentanyl who don't even realize that they're using fentanyl. It takes such a small amount of fentanyl. And I'm not really sure where um, your number came from, the 42,000. That was actually a couple of years ago. The CDC, actually, we had 108,000 people, which is 295 people a day die in uh, 2021 from drug overdose, of which around 75 to 80% were uh, based on fentanyl, you know, do either primary cause or a present at death. And so it's it's a little bit higher than that 42,000. It's roughly 70 or 75,000 people. It's essentially a lot of people. Oh yeah, it's very, very alarming. So let's talk about this potential vaccine. First off, what went through your mind when you heard about this and what would this potentially mean for Northeast Florida? Well, first of all, it's definitely in the testing stage. And I do want to say there's two different um, kind of new releases. One is out of the University of Houston, which I believe is the study that you were looking at, which does block the uh, pain receptor, as you said. So a person who somehow ingested fentanyl purposefully or not purposefully would um, not achieve the high. The second one, which, okay, so here's the concern. If you are a real opioid user, a prescribed opioid user, would it block your opioid receptors? And it doesn't, which is really encouraging. So if a person who is a prescribed a pain medication patient, they would um, still be able to use a prescribed opioid and receive the pain relief that they're looking for legitimately. Um, the, the second action that is being looked at. Actually, we have a University of Florida researcher working on it. It's in conjunction with University of Florida, Washington University, and the University of Southern California. Sorry, I'm looking down at the study right now. And it was just published in Nature Magazine, but it's Jay McLaughlin, who is our UF um, researcher. And I'm sure if we could get him involved in this, it would be really great. Um, but it does a different action. It actually just keeps the fentanyl from creating the potential deadly um, action in your system. So there are two different actions that are being looked at. And there's actually, we have a, a call on Monday with another group that is looking at non-opioid pain medications. There are so many exciting things on the forefront for people to um, begin to get the pain relief they need if it's legitimate and yet not have the risk of ingesting fentanyl. So the difference this could make, it could save lives right here in Jacksonville. All right. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time and have a great one. We appreciate it again. Thank you so much. Take care.